Hi, welcome to the latest episode of Lifting the Lid. Uh, my name is Andy Ely, I'm a Senior Funeral Director with G-Seller Independent Funeral Directors and we've been serving bereaved families since 1910. I'm sure you're well aware there's lots of different taboos, myths and misconceptions as to what happens within the funeral profession and we've decided to put together this series of podcasts to try and dispel some of those myths and of course answer any of the questions that you might have. So please, please do like, share and subscribe. Send any questions in, pop them to um, liftingthelid at gseller.co.uk and we will do our absolute best to answer them for you. It genuinely, seriously is our family caring for your family. So today I'm with my colleague Joe. Hello Joe. Hello again. Um, we're going to be talking about what happens when your loved one passes away. So fortunately it's something we don't want to be experiencing too frequently. And more often than not, it's something we don't really know what to do. So we thought we'd give you some answers on the different circumstances that someone may pass away. And just talk through those next steps, all those first steps. So of course it, it does depend where, where someone passes away. It could be at home, it could be in a care home, um, it could be in hospital. Of course there's also those tragic circumstances that happen. And um, that does kind of determine the route, the course of action from there. Mm. Wouldn't you agree, Joe? Absolutely. Um, so I guess really for, for families and, and peace of mind, if someone's at home or passes away in a care home, then that's a much more preferable, um, preferable scenario. If that is the case, so certainly in a care home, then their care provider, whether that's a nurse or a member of the care staff there, um, would phone their doctor's surgery and hopefully send out a doctor who would then verify yeah, that and the person had passed away. There's a time frame there, isn't there? Should be usually within six hours, but regrettably, if it is a bit longer, then it's nothing to be alarmed about. Okay. Um, you know, it can take a little bit longer. Um, that same scenario happens, of course, if you're in a private home, um, although it'd probably be a member of the family that then phones the doctors um, instead. Um, but as you well know, of course, sometimes people can pass away in all sorts of different scenarios. Um, yeah, absolutely. So we could be talking about um, road traffic accidents, absolutely. Um, sudden passing away on the high street. It could be anywhere, couldn't it? It could be someone suffers a you know a fatal heart attack. Um, paramedics are called, so the of course the ambulance people are involved there as well. Um, and of course, what happens from there depends on um, what scenario as you start moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, in those circumstances, of course, we, um, the emergency response people, so the police would make that initial phone, phone call um, for tragic circumstances that we're talking about. Yeah. And I mean, what they do, um, when the police normally call us, I mean, they'll give us the information that we need um, to be able to affect the conveyance. But that actually happens in, in every scenario, of course. Um, there is certain information that we need to be able to look after somebody from anywhere. Um, so whether that's the family calling, whether that's care staff or care home, nursing home, or whether it's the police. There's always three types of identification that we need to be able to affect to begin with a conveyance. So that's full name of the deceased, full name of the Absolutely. person who's passed away, current location, and their date of birth. Absolutely, and that, um, that's, the, that's the initial information that's passed, shared with us um, as the funeral directors. Um, and then we, we respond in a certain time frame. Now that, that time frame, for, from our, our perspective at G Seller, that's kind of to a degree it's determined by, by the family, isn't it? So if, if, if there's family members that want to spend a bit more time with their loved one, um, perhaps travelling from a, um, you know, a different location, then we will we'll allow that to happen. There's no rush. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we, we do like to say that we'd like to be there in attendance within an hour, mm -hmm. but, you know, we, we're flexible. We can do whatever you wish. Yeah. And I'm sure, sorry, I'm sure it's, uh, it's probably happened to yourself as well. Sometimes you arrive at a house and there might be someone who's phoned in the meantime while we've been on the way there. You know, families say that there's somebody on the way and they'd like to come and attend to say their goodbyes and that's not a problem at all. Absolutely. You know, we'll either wait um, or we'll go away and we'll come back at a convenient time. So. Yeah, so it's important to say in those circumstances that uh, we can only attend after the doctor has Absolutely. verified. Yeah, indeed. So when we arrive um, at... So let's, let's talk about um, a, a home conveyance, so someone passed away at home. So sh should we talk through how we actually facilitate and carry out a... Yeah, absolutely, because I mean, we have a, 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 a proper conveyance vehicle, so we certainly don't call it a van, you know, it's a proper um, kitted out conveyance vehicle that's been specially designed um, for our company. It's very unique, in fact. Um, so on that has all the equipment that we need to be able to effectively carry out a conveyance. Um, so we'll arrive at a house in that initially, We'll never just pull up onto a drive. Um, it's a bit Always impolite, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. It. So we'll always just park on the road initially, um, and then we'll go into the house and we'll start 
taking um, some details down. So we tend to work in teams of two, don't we? Yeah. Um, so two people, we go into the house um, as a partnership. Now, from our perspective, Gisela, we, we have a conversation with the family and start to talk about those next steps at that point. Take a little bit more information, perhaps double check all the detail we've got. Mm -hmm. The secondary person, they tend to be um, just kind of assessing the situation, how we can do things dignified, um, safely, safely for ourselves. Almost like a hawk on risk assessments. Absolutely. When you get into a house, there's all sorts of obstacles, especially you coming down a flight of stairs. Absolutely. The amount of times you've almost hit vases or something coming down, or pictures on walls. You need to be very careful, of course. You know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sort of Ornaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> Um, and we've got all the equipment, we should have all the equipment. I think it's important to say, um, as well as on the vehicle, the equipment that we have, we only have one individual, one person that's passed away on yep. there. Um, even if that's a, um, a hospital conveyance, which obviously <laughs> a different circumstance, if everything's in line to be able to perform those conveyances much, much simpler. Hmm. Because a hospital, of course, is designed for that manner. Yep. Back to a home environment, um, when we return outside, we have a bit of a conversation um, as to work out the best plan of action to get out of that house. Hmm. Quite often we're asked if a family can stay in with us, can't, uh, don't we? And yeah, which isn't a problem at all. Um, you know, I always assure people there's nothing that we do we're ashamed of, and I absolutely mean that. Um, I do explain we're there to do a practical task, um, and you know, as such there is the equipment that we need to use. We do everything with dignity and respect though, so if people want to remain in there, as long as they understand that, then that's absolutely no problem at all. Yeah, and just to explain that sometimes it can be it can be quite distressing, of course. Can't be distressing it? sometimes. Yeah. yeah, but we, you know, everything is done in the dignified, correct, proper manner. Everyone deserves it. Everyone receives it. Yeah. Of course, there's other bits of information we'd need as well, won't we? So we need to. We've had the prior information from that first call, um, but there'll also be um, details about jewellery that we'll need to take. And we'd normally ask someone if we were present there. So whether that's a family member or in the case of a care home. Uh, you know, we'd ask the care staff there just a sign to say if we were taking any jewellery, get them to check just to make sure it's there. Yeah. And then we'd list any jewellery um, and get them to sign to say that we're uh, we're taking that with us or not. Absolutely. And that's the same for the data protection piece as well, that, that signature. So we, we would, of course, be needing to share details with perhaps next of kin um, hospitals and we, we need the person's permission to do that. We do. So nursing homes, um, a similar kind of process to, uh, to a home conveyance, um, however things are slightly simpler because they tend to be designed, um, they've got wider uh, um, alleyways, um, beds that move up and down, it just makes things a little bit easier for us doesn't it? They do yeah, and often uh, uh, you know, if, if someone's upstairs, or seats is upstairs then they're They've often got lifts um, that we can use as well. Yeah, it makes things um, much, much simpler. Yeah, because of course it can. There's that manual handling piece. It can, it can be quite strenuous on it. Um, quite difficult sometimes. Well, we're getting on a bit, is what you're saying, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Sometimes the backs are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's absolutely a team, a team effort. And um, from our perspective, we absolutely need to be there for that family. So if there's any questions at any point, then we're there to answer them. Okay. Of course, once we've carried out the conveyance and um, your loved one is resting on our vehicle one of us goes back in don't we just just to make sure everything's okay and perhaps if we have Some, moved yeah. ornaments yeah put, put them back, them back yeah. now someone always stays in that vehicle so when the deceased is on that vehicle someone will always stay um, while the other person goes in and perhaps just gets whatever remaining details they need and sometimes those conversations be, can be quite a long time, can't they? So, it can be, yeah. I can be stood outside yeah. for, for some time, but it's absolutely fine. Absolutely <laughs> fine. Um, now, what happens from that instance is, uh, is kind of um, content for perhaps a, a, a further subsequent podcast. But what we do is we convey back to our mortuary. Or of course, in the case of tragic circumstances, it would be the coroner's mortuary. Yes. Um, most importantly, from our perspective, we ensure that the family are aware where their loved one is at every stage. So we call the next morning, don't we? Yeah. And just talk through the next steps, perhaps the registration process, if the coroner's involved, um, to wait and expect the call from the coroner. Just to reassure and put, you know, that family's yeah, mind at ease. Yeah, indeed. Absolutely. I think that's... Pretty much uh, some of that part of that. Yeah, so thank you. I think, um, so uh, as, as previously mentioned, if you do have any questions about specifics, please do like, share, subscribe. Send us an email, um, liftingthelid at gseller.co.uk and we will do our absolute best to answer them. So we'll see you next time. Thank you.